At around 12.30 p.m. on May 18, Shenzhen's SCG building on Huachang North Road shook violently, sending people fleeing. It started with a single creak, so faint, most ignored it. But in the heart of Shanghai, where towers pierce the clouds and the skyline screams ambition, something has begun to shift, not in the markets, not in politics, but on the ground. The city's proudest giants, skyscrapers that define its identity, are tilting. Engineers have a word for it. Unstoppable. There is no crash, no explosion, no sirens, just a slow, silent pull of gravity and the knowledge that every day the lean grows worse. For the millions who live and work beneath these towers, the danger isn't coming. It's already here. Calm before the storm, Shanghai's rise. At dawn, the Lujiazui district wakes in gold. The first light slides down glass facades, igniting a forest of towers that stretch higher than the morning mist. Steel and concrete stand like sentinels along the Huangpu River, their reflections rippling in the current. The city hums beneath them, ferries, street vendors, and traders moving as if the skyline were eternal. From the outside, Shanghai looks untouchable, as if its foundations were carved from stone. But what lies beneath is not rock and not unshakable. It is a foundation built on trust and on soft earth. In just 30 years, Shanghai transformed from a low-rise port city into one of the most vertical places on earth. Entire neighborhoods vanished, replaced by towers that seemed to grow overnight. Architects came from across the world drawn by the promise of building in a city that spared no ambition. Each new skyscraper was taller, sleeker, more extravagant than the last. They stood not only as offices and homes, but as monuments to human engineering. The skyline became the pride of modern China, a symbol broadcast on postcards, TV dramas, and travel ads. But under the weight of all that ambition, the city's true foundation was rarely questioned. That foundation is made of silt and clay, soft alluvial soil laid down by the Yangtze River over centuries. Much of it was reclaimed from wetlands and shallow waters, filled and compacted until it seemed ready to bear the load of glass and steel. But soft soil has a memory. It shifts, it breathes, and over time, it remembers the rivers and tides it once belonged to. For years, the danger remained invisible, hidden under pavement and parks. But a city can only build upward for so long before the ground starts to answer back. First signs of trouble. It began quietly. So quietly that at first, no one saw a pattern. In one commercial tower, an engineer inspecting routine maintenance noticed something strange. A window that refused to close without force. Elsewhere in the same building, an office door scraped the floor as if the frame had um, warped overnight. Tenants joked about cheap hinges and poor design. But the engineers didn't laugh. Floors that once felt level now seemed to dip ever so slightly. No alarms were raised, no evacuations ordered. But those closest to the data knew that in a city built on soft ground, even small changes demand attention. The inspections grew more precise. Laser surveys were brought in, their beams slicing across the lobbies and corridors in invisible lines. What they found was unsettling, a lean measurable in millimeters and growing. Over weeks, those millimeters became centimeters. In the world of skyscraper engineering, that shift might as well be a red flare in the night sky. Water left on a desk would roll slowly toward one side. Elevators, once smooth, began to misalign with their doors by the tiniest fraction, a difference you could see if you looked closely. These were not random quirks. They were the early language of a building in motion. When the reports landed on official desks, the response was swift but calculated. City representatives reassured the public that the situation was within normal settlement limits. 
the kind of statement designed to sound technical and harmless. Engineers were told to keep monitoring, to collect more data. Meanwhile, those living and working inside the buildings were left in the dark, unaware that the structures they trusted every day had already begun their slow, silent shift. The danger wasn't loud. It was patient, and patience in this case was a warning. The tilt becomes visible. It didn't take long before the numbers on engineers' reports turned into something the human eye could catch. In one tower, laser reading showed the building had shifted nearly 8 centimeters from vertical. A deviation small enough to miss at a glance, but large enough to worry anyone who understood structural physics. Residents began to notice it in daily life. A glass left on a countertop would drift, inching toward the edge. Cabinet doors swung open on their own. Even walking across certain hallways felt subtly different, like stepping across a slope in a place that should be perfectly flat. The quiet murmurs of engineers had become something impossible to ignore. People started to leave, quietly, without drawing attention. Some families packed up in the middle of the night, loading cars and moving in with relatives. Office tenants arranged for relocation, citing renovations instead of risk to avoid scaring clients. But outside on the streets below, the curiosity was harder to hide. Clusters of onlookers stood with phones raised, capturing slow pans of the skyline. They pointed out the slight angle, arguing whether it was real or just a trick of perspective. The footage began appearing online, drawing millions of views. On the 21st floor of one residential tower, an elderly couple sat beside a crooked window frame. The steel warped just enough to show daylight through a seam. Neighbors urged them to leave, warning that the building wasn't safe. But the couple refused. This is all we have, the man said, his voice steady but tired. Decades of life were tied to this apartment. Their wedding photos on the wall the old armchair by the window, the balcony where they'd watched the city change. Living for them felt like losing more than a home, and so they stayed, while outside, the skyline they once trusted continued its quiet, irreversible shift. The science of an unstoppable lean. The roots of this crisis lie deep beneath Shanghai's glittering surface. Much of the city's high-rise district sits on soft delta soil, silt and clay layered over centuries by the Yangtze River. This ground is strong enough for gardens, parks, and roads, but under the weight of hundreds of thousands of tons of glass and steel, it begins to move, not all at once and not evenly. In some places, the soil compresses just a little faster, a little deeper than in others. That's all it takes for one side of a building to sink lower than the other, starting a tilt that only worsens with time. Human activity has made the problem worse. For decades, the city pumped vast amounts of groundwater to feed construction and industry, leaving invisible voids in the earth. Every new tower adds more pressure to the soil beneath it. Every pile driver, every subway tunnel, every nearby construction site sends vibrations rippling through the ground. Over years, those vibrations and empty pockets create tiny shifts. And when you're dealing with a structure that weighs as much as a small mountain, even the smallest shift becomes a force you can't fight back. Engineers often explain it with a simple image, a book sliding off a tilted shelf. You can push it back into place for a while, but gravity will always wane. The same is true for these towers. Methods are like underpinning, Adding new support to a sinking foundation sound promising, but in practice they can destabilize the soil even more. In buildings already leaning, that extra stress risks accelerating the very collapse they're meant to prevent. And so, while technology can monitor the tilt, nothing built by human hands can truly stop it. The lean has begun, and it will continue. The human cost. The tilt isn't just an engineering problem. It's an eviction notice in slow motion. Families who once thought they had secured a lifetime home 
now find themselves crammed into temporary rentals, their possessions reduced to what could be carried in a single truck. Years of mortgage payments now feel like wasted effort, as property values plummet far below what anyone paid. For retirees, it's worse. Their homes were their pensions, the equity their safety net, now shredded by a creeping lien they can't control. Some cry in front of cameras, others refuse to speak, ashamed that their forever apartment has turned into a cautionary tale. The loss isn't just financial, it's a loss of place, of certainty, of the belief that walls would stand and floors would stay level. The damage spreads beyond the apartments themselves, bleeding into the streets below. Small businesses that once thrived on steady pedestrian traffic are folding one by one, their doors locked, windows dusty. Cafes that used to hum with lunchtime chatter now sit empty, chairs stacked like a signal of defeat. Shopkeepers talk about how regular customers stopped coming the moment the media began calling the building unsafe. It doesn't matter that the shops aren't inside the tower, danger casts a long shadow. And when the foot traffic disappears, so does the livelihood of those who depend on it. Some of the images are almost too surreal to believe. In one evacuated flat, children chase a ball that rolls, without being touched, to one corner of the tilted room, their giggles masking the danger beneath their feet. In another, a shopkeeper traces a new crack running jaggedly across his ceiling, each day marking where it's lengthened. For them, the lane is not an abstract concept, it's a daily reminder that safety is slipping away. The slow motion disaster is no longer something happening to a building, it's something happening to people, one home, one business, one life at a time. Government response and distrust. Officials step up to microphones, armed with prepared statements and calm smiles. The situation is under control, they insist. We have implemented continuous monitoring and taken precautionary measures. On paper, those measures sound reassuring. Networks of sensors now line the tower's base, feeding real-time data to city engineers. Heavy trucks have been banned from certain nearby roads to reduce ground vibrations. But in living rooms and street corners, the tone is different. Residents swap stories about past minor issues that later turned into disasters. They remember how other structural problems in the city were once downplayed, until they made headlines for all the wrong reasons. Whispers turn into warnings. The lean isn't stopping. It isn't slowing. And the engineers who speak off record admit the truths plainly. Gravity doesn't negotiate. Escalation, other towers under watch. What started as one building's nightmare is now a citywide anxiety. In the past week alone, at least four other districts have reported early signs of foundation movement. Hairline cracks in basements, doors that no longer close flush, and that unmistakable slant only a builder's level can confirm. Drone footage paints a chilling picture. Glass and steel towers that look perfect from the street, but from above, they're not quite vertical. The lean is subtle, the kind you'd miss at eye level, yet unmistakable once you see it. Social media explodes with speculation. Has the soil shifted beneath entire neighborhoods? Were corners cut during construction? Or is this the first hint of a much larger problem nobody wants to name? By morning, real estate agents are quietly pulling listings. Overnight, dozens of high-rise apartments vanish from property sites. Those who can afford to leave are making calls to moving trucks. Those who can't are left staring at the walls, wondering how long they'll stay up. Panic spreads in whispers, a domino effect feared but not yet proven. And yet, everyone seems to know once one tower falls, the rest may follow. Still unfolding. The threat isn't over. Experts are now warning that this isn't just about one building. It's about what could happen next. Structural instability doesn't just vanish. It creeps. 
Hidden fractures in the foundation can spread through concrete, like cracks in ice. And beneath these towers run critical utility lines. Water, power, gas. Any rupture here could trigger chaos that's far more dangerous than a lean. Imagine evacuating thousands of residents with only minutes to spare, stairwells jammed, elevators offline. Worse still, climate scientists are pointing to heavier, more unpredictable rains in the region, a direct result of shifting weather patterns. That water seeps into the soil, softening it, moving it, making any foundation more vulnerable. Tonight, Shanghai's skyline still glitters, every light perfect, every tower a picture of confidence. But the truth? Some of them are moving, quietly, relentlessly. Skyscrapers have always been symbols of ambition, monuments to what humans can build when they refuse to look down. But they're also reminders that the laws of physics are not negotiable. The lean will not stop, and in the months to come, more glass giants could follow. In Shanghai, the skyline still shines. But for those who know where to look, the future is already bending. Subscribe to Doomline, because when disaster strikes, we bring you the truth.